Hi, I'm Sean McManus. I'm at KubeCon and I'm joined now by Gabriele Bartolini and Simon Metzon. And we're going to be talking about cloud native PG. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me today. Gabriele, let me ask you, first of all, why was cloud native PG created and what's its status today? Yeah, I think the best, the best way to answer to your question is with two more questions. So why Kubernetes and why Postgres? So we'll start with why Kubernetes. Kubernetes was created 10 years ago and it's become the standard for managing infrastructure, infrastructure and applications that run inside. And the reason for Kubernetes is to uh, enable uh, organizations to create, deliver faster. So when we spotted this uh, uh, opportunity back then, we decided to try and put you know, Postgres inside Kubernetes to see if the database could be part of this uh, infrastructure. Uh, so the second question is why Postgres? Okay, why Postgres is, you know, I've been using Postgres for 25 years. I'm a recognized Postgres contributor. And coming from a DevOps world we, and seeing the potential of Kubernetes, we immediately saw that running Postgres in Kubernetes was not right back then. It was five and a half years ago. And uh, we looked at the existing solutions back then, but our impression was that they were designed to bring Kubernetes to Postgres people rather than the other way around. So there, there were tools targeted for a database audience rather than a Kubernetes audience, which is much larger. And that's where Cloud Native PG started. The idea was to unify these two worlds, the world of uh, Kubernetes and the world of Postgres with an operator designed to bring Postgres to Kubernetes people. Uh, the idea, initially the software was closed source. It was uh, started um, uh, in, in my previous company, which, uh, and, then, and then it's become, uh, uh, op it's been open sourced two and a half, almost three years ago. Uh, initially, we applied for the CNCF sandbox. The CNCF is the Cloud Native Com Computing Foundation, which organizes this, uh, you know, um, amazing event and uh, the idea was to donate the software to the CNCF. It didn't happen immediately. It took two and a half years. In January it happened and I'm really glad that CloudNet EPG is now a project of the uh, CNCF and uh, this is where we're standing today. Gabriele, tell us about the real world adoption that you've seen for Cloud Native PG. Okay, so Cloud Native PG, since the moment we <clears throat> open sourced it, because of this different mindset, Postgres for Kubernetes people, we've seen a steep adoption. If you look at the number of stars of CMPG, it's impressive. I mean, there's, now we have in number of stars the most uh, popular operator uh, for Postgres. And this is, uh, you know, by also presenting at various KubeCons. This is, I think, the fifth or sixth KubeCon I present. Uh, over time, so with patience, people have uh, tried to embrace the fact that they can run databases in Kubernetes. Also, with our involvement in the Data on Kubernetes community, we are, we are helping uh, change the mindset. Another important thing is that now databases are the number one workloads in, in, in Kubernetes, which is fascinating if you think that this solution was not designed for stateful workloads. So having an open source project that is now part of the CNCF encourages adopters all over the world to uh, uh, share their experience with the world. And uh, with the hope that the software goes even further in the CNCF project, to reduce the risk of vendor lock-in for the database and for Kubernetes, which is a major uh, asset for their organization. So in terms of adopters, I can cite, for example, IBM Cloud Pack, uh, Microsoft Azure, Akamai. Uh, they just did a talk before about this, and they talked about Planet PG on this. But there's uh, Novo Nordisk is another adopter. 
So the, the list is long and becoming longer every, every, every month. So um, this is where we stand. In terms of a sector, we pretty much work with any sector because the database is, uh, is everywhere. And you'll see, you know, AI is fueling the adoption of, uh, of databases in Kubernetes. And also it's, it's an opportunity for us to grow both in Postgres and Kubernetes. Yesterday was data on Kubernetes day and the sort of amount of people that were coming up to Gabrielli and the other maintainers and committers were huge. Like it's sort of, some people were treating Leonardo as a rock star, which was kind of nice. And just the sort of general love for the project. Cause it is such a, people need a database at the end of their application, right? Like you've got to store the data or else it's not really an app. And um, being able to, as, as Gabrielli was saying, like take the, the database into the Kubernetes ecosystem just to resonates really, really well. It's a really important thing. And I think we've taken the right approach. We, it took time, it's not been easy, but we've come from the ground with the CNCF, working with Tag Storage, which is the authority, the, 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 the technical advisory group that uh, covers databases. And I think we've done a good job and we see a lot of recognition, as Simon was saying, people stop by saying thank you for what you're doing and so on. So it's really appreciated. Simon, tell us about your hybrid control plane and the need that that meets. Obviously, as a company, we need to make some money and pay some salaries. And so we're taking the open source tech and building on top of that. And so we're looking at what problems do larger organizations have that Cube doesn't solve itself, CMP doesn't solve itself. Um, we see sort of things, we have a lot of organizations where they have maybe a uh, legacy environment that's running on old servers or maybe even new servers in a data center next to their Kubernetes environments, next to their cloud environment. And so we're trying to solve a problem where you don't want to be managing different things for different infrastructure, right? Like the whole kind of point of Kube is to have like one way of doing it. And so we're saying, well, how can we, how can we solve that problem for DBAs, for, for data teams? And so we're looking at ways of saying, well, we're, we're invested in Kubernetes. We're going to build the operator. Um, but how do we extend that and expand that and cover more things? And so the HCP, Hybrid Control Plane, uh, lets you monitor external databases as well as what's inside the Cube cluster. It lets you monitor multiple Cube clusters as well. Um, and then, then we start thinking about what workloads are running. And as Gab was saying earlier, AI is a driver. People want to sort of see more AI, want to get more value out of their data sets by using AI. And so how do we kind of join up those things with, with what we've already got? And so the HCP also provides a facility to sort of manage AI workloads, uh, also using other open source tech from uh, the CNCF, and also analytics workloads that uh, is proprietary stuff that we've built um, on, top of Cube, on top of Postgres. And so we're trying to sort of solve this sort of, solve the data problem of a large enterprise in a sort of coherent and sensible single place. I see. Now, organizations are increasingly concerned about data sovereignty. Simon, tell us how you help with that. So there are a few things there. So there are some features in Postgres that sort of make it easier to uh, stop prying eyes, look at your data, um, transparent data encryption, things like that, let you uh, lock it down more. Um, but the real thing is we're seeing companies say, we really want the flexibility of cloud but we don't want to put it into a third party. We don't want to put our entire business into that third party. And, and for most companies, their data set is their business, right? Like you can run a very you know, high revenue company on a very key piece of data. And so being able to say, well, with Kubernetes, you've got the ability to have that dynamism of the cloud. You can run that on premise, and then you can now bring your, uh, with, with CMP and other tools, you can bring your data set on premise and, and have that dynamic kind of behavior. And then on top of that, that sort of AI workload, I don't necessarily want to send all of my data off to another third party, right? So being able to run uh, LLMs and things like that locally gives you that sort of sovereign experience that my data is always within my four walls kind of thing. And, and I think people are kind of appreciating that more. Like I think some of the, the AI stuff has sort of set off some alarm bells in some cases where they realize that their data set is being used as training for someone else's data set, right? And, and that's something that people are, I think, justifiably concerned about. And this gives you a nice way of saying, actually, I know that it's never leaving the perimeter. Right. Gabriele, what can you add? Yeah, 
I think uh, to describe data sovereignty, I, I actually wrote a blog article uh, about cloud neutrality for Postgres. So what we're at now is the, in a five-stage uh, uh, evolution of Postgres. This is the last one, uh, which I call cloud neutral. And uh, it covers day two operations, um, and it follows the DIVAS uh, era. Okay, with cloud neutral, you can bring your database in any Kubernetes uh, distribution, whether it's, you know, as someone was saying, on-prem or uh, entirely public or hybrid, without changing anything. And this is something unprecedented, and covering also day two operations, so the most complex operational stuff that can be delegated to the operator. And uh, another trend that is uh, important is also for cost optimization. You know, if you want to protect your data, you can use bare metal machines for Postgres and uh, uh, provide better performance uh, for AI workloads. So this is something that uh, we are actually seeing at the moment a lot with many customers all over the world that are uh, you know, trying to uh, get ownership again of their data. I think like people like to think that there's like one solution. They really would like to have one cloud vendor, for example, but that's just not reality. For a large enough company, right? Like you're going to have a company that's acquired five other companies and each of those five companies will have their own CSP accounts. They might have a data center they're running. They might be using different technologies. And so rationalizing that is a, is a hard challenge, right? And so being able to say, at least for our databases, it's all CMP and we have one way of managing it. We have one way of uh, thinking about it. Everyone in the team knows what that is. You're sort of saving, even if they're running on different clouds or on-prem or off-prem, you've got that kind of simplified experience that lets your team go faster, right? Whereas saying we're having 15 different ways of doing Postgres, it's just not sustainable. Right? And uh, I want to add on there, with, you know, with our company, we are helping a lot of customers move from uh, VMs to, 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 metal, uh, to, to Kubernetes, for example. And just a few days ago, and that fascinates me from a database perspective, I was helping this large organization in the Middle East to uh, configure their bare metal machines with bare metal Kubernetes. And it's something that we have been advocating for a long time and seeing that it's now real it means that change is coming. You know, organizations want to understand the benefits and the opportunity of bringing their data inside Kubernetes now on bare metal with even local storage for, uh, you know, also a better cost. Yeah, I think the, I did the keynote at DOK yesterday and the point there was like, it's not a when, it's a now, right? These things are happening now. Companies are picking this technology up and using it. There was a conversation a few years ago, which was like, why should I? But the rate of change is now like it's not a it's a when do I do it and I'm already doing it and that's that's really cool. Gabriele, what's next for cloud native PG? And uh, now that we are officially in the CNCF sandbox, we want to reach incubation. Incubation is uh, uh, when things get serious. Okay, so I think and to get in, into incubation you need adopters. So uh, and we also need to. Uh, make our governance and our uh, policies of the project conforming with the CNCF guidelines. So this is, I'd say, the next uh, big, I mean, it's another step uh, for the growth of the project. In terms of features, I'd like to say that we are in a unique position now, and I was stopped by a few people here saying thank you for the work you're doing in bridging both the Kubernetes and the Postgres communities to make those products better. So we have uh, worked as, uh, you know, with our company and with our uh, engineers to introduce a patch in Postgres that will uh, facilitate the, the deployment of uh, extensions, because a Postgres is extensible, in a Kubernetes environment. And we are taking advantage of a new feature of Kubernetes, which, which is called image volumes, to mount uh, uh, these artifacts in an immutable way so that it's secure, uh, because security is vital, okay, everywhere in Kubernetes, um, on the fly. So this is a feature that will 
we will start benefiting maybe from next year as a community, but our company is willing to backport it to uh, the previous versions to give you know, uh, added value to our customers. And, uh, and then the plugins. Uh, we are making a pluggable, we have already made a pluggable interface for Cloud PG, and we are hoping to get more uh, contributions to the project in terms of external plugins to make Cloud PG not only a project, but an ecosystem that can live and thrive in the CNCF uh, community by integrating with other projects. Now that we are in the CNCF, we can talk with leaders in other areas like observability, like Hotel Prometheus, or identity management like Keyclock, and so on, and, and grow together, together. So I think this is what, 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 we, what we're planning for the future. Gentlemen, thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you.